We're going to be witnessing an Inquisitor of Flow today, protecting the Imperium from a apparently heretical apothecary played by Kicken. It's a new one on me, but we'll see how it goes. Pretty weird pairing here within the SM and IG matchup. The Epo is particularly good at trading. The Inquisitor isn't really about that. She's more about being very obnoxious, to be honest. Harassment, control, stuns, bleed, and wipes. But not really helping her infantry just trade better. That's more of a Lord Commissar and particularly a Lord General kind of thing. We'll see how it goes. Kicking, perhaps going for a double tactical marine opening here, or perhaps he's going for some Devastators. We'll have to see if he drops gens after building the power node. No, so presumably we're going to be looking at a little bit of double tactical marine action. So the scouts here utilizing their green cover, trying to stall for as long as possible, basically against the Sentinel. They're doing a pretty good job, to be honest. It's frustrating for the Sentinel because he can't break this piece of cover here. It's indestructible cover. These two scouts are not in cover. You can see they're taking some pretty big damage there from the Sent. They've got to retreat, they don't want to bleed. Meanwhile, the Inquisitor did her best to do a little bit of damage to the Tactical Marines, but honestly, didn't really do that much. They could just get a heal from the Apo. Probably should have. After all, the Apo is not going to need that heal anytime soon. Only got Garsman to contend with. Sergeant coming in, but it's going to be too late. Damn, dropping five models already. I mean, at least he does have the sergeant now, so reinforcing those lots of models won't be too big of a deal. Sentinel getting super low right now. Kraken Rounds activated a little bit late there from kicking, and wow, Flo just upgraded the stomp as well. That could have been a huge deal if he lost that Sentinel right there. A scout did end up dying over here. Must have came forward, got hit by the Sentinel and the Garza, had to go back and come back again. And we see the Braze here. So a lot of upgrades here from the IG. This is not really how we see IG played recently. We typically see them foregoing their early game upgrades on their starting units and their heroes in favour of faster tier 1.5, in particular Kadashin Devils, which would be very good on this map due to the high amount of garrisons, which you can see the Tactical Marines utilising here. Holy Pie is okay to zone the amount of garrisons. It does do damage over time for a very long time, but as you can see, the actual damage of the damage over time is very low and it doesn't do extra against garrisons but it also doesn't do less I think Top had worn out his voice yesterday. I wouldn't mind, I have not even been partying. You know what I did yesterday? Cast loads of Dawn of War 2. <laughs> and apparently if you binge cast too much Dawn of War 2, it messes up your voice. Yikes. Yikes. I'm gonna need throat surgery to cast Dawn of War 2. <laughs> I already had some... Well... I can't call it throat surgery, it wasn't my throat. I got my tonsils and adenoids removed as an adult, which was amazing. Because they got inflamed non-stop. And I didn't even realise, I spent all of my teenage years with inflamed fucking tonsils permanently. And I didn't even realise, because I would got so used to it. Kickin's gone for the 1-1-1 one build. Which is a little bit weird given that he did choose to build his gen so late. Not optimal, but hey, it's working out pretty good so far. Inquisitor is meant to be the one counter initiating the ASM, but she can't really do that because she's oppressed. Oh 
Yeah, he's been putting in some good work there. Did lose a model, but I think to force off all these units, it's going to be good. Flamer attacks have arrived. They can take out the power node right here. Very convenient for them. There is a bit of a map control problem for kicking, which is a bit weird given that Flo has so few units. What is Flo trying to do here? Going for a fast tech. Man, that's brave. Flame attacks are literally right there. But APO's half HP, ASM have lost the model. Maybe Kicking doesn't want to push this. That said, Kicking should know there is no tier 1.5 right now, so it's quite obvious what the IG is trying to do. The Inquisitor can be fairly good at a fast tech with her Bane Wolf player, but it requires a lot of red, and right now, Flood doesn't have anywhere near enough red. Is it 125 or is it 175? I don't really recall. It's at least 125 to call down the Bane Wolf, which isn't so difficult to achieve against Orcs or Tyranids, but against Space Marines, who, as you can see, don't really like losing models. It can be quite challenging. A little bit of a misplay there from Kicking D setting up his Devastator, but very nice special attack there from the ASM. Gonna yeet the Inquisitor back. Vengeance rounds would have proved quite useful there. Sentinel just totally free to walk through and get the stomp off. But I don't think it's going to be that helpful. Oh, maybe it is. Mm, nothing's tying up the Devastator. Again, a little bit late. But everything's going to get suppressed. ASM should be able to kill the Inquisitor. Oh, he doesn't go for it. Oh, he goes for it too late. That's unlucky. But does he have a jump? He's jumping right into the base now, so there's damage resistance. So instead, he's going to go backwards. He's going to jump on the Gaza and try and disrupt them. Sentinel is outputting damage onto the Devastator here though, which appears to not be getting the benefits to cover because of the angle. Ah, I don't think he can force them off though. Okay, it doesn't matter. The, the Bane Wolf is now here. I guess it's 125 red. Losing all the Gazman models, losing the generator, that does provide a little bit of red. Maybe Kicking was intentionally, sorry not Kicking, maybe Flo was intentionally staying in combat for a while there to farm the red from the lost Gazman models. Remember you get 75% of the red that the person, so the person who loses the unit gets 75% of the red value that the person who killed the unit gets. So you both get red value even when you're losing units, and quite a lot of it too. The Bane Wolf is an interesting one, particularly against the Space Marine CSM kind of factions because the chem cannon on it. It's actually got a modifier to do bonus damage against heavy infantry, which makes it pretty good against ASM attacks. Even though typically you'd expect these sort of flamer style AOE weapons that are good at bashing gens, you'd expect that they were better against light infantry swarms. And it's certainly good at that, but yeah, having that extra modifier to kill heavy infantry, it's pretty useful. Because your typical flamers, they don't really do anything to tax or ASM. Too much HP per model. Could be very useful to control the ASM as well. So you've got an active ability called the Chem Bomb on this thing, which shoots out a load of corrosive chemicals into an area, which slows the enemy and does damage over time. But just from passively hitting the enemy squad with the Chem Cannon, you reduce their speed. I'm not sure if it reduces damage as well, but just the speed alone is pretty nice to stop any ASM that are chasing down the units. We've got some Plasma Guns coming out now for the Guardsmen. We've got a Melter Bomb being thrown down onto the Sentinel. I guess, yeah, get rid of the Sentinel first and then deal with the... Bane Wolf after the Sentinel, generally a bit easier to kill. But some decent micro from Flo there. Well, there was, pulling his Sentinel back, but now he's walking it forward, which is weird. Last kind of did misfire onto the Guardsman. He needs to get some repairs on the Sentinel. What is he doing? Oh, I guess there's no line of sight. Yeah, Devastator stood out of cover, eating six Plasma Guns to the face. They've got to get the hell out of there. Now that the Inquisitor's Tier 2 could opt for the excruciators her tier 2 army that grants her the assail ability that would be quite handy for sure in controlling the ASM it's always difficult going ASM against the Inquisitor they can do so well in tier 1 but you know that they're not going to scale great now because he's gone for the Bane Wolf he doesn't have the typical reinforcement on the field of the Chimera. And you can see that the Guardsmen are getting very dilapidated because of this. 
I would suggest a medical bunker for Flo. Somewhere like here, so that you can't just easily hit it with PDEVs, because it will hit this pillar which can't be destroyed. If you just put it here, it's very easy to attack ground it with PDEVs, so that's quite a bad idea. Because PDEVs are just a good generalist unit anyway against the IG. We do see though, rather than PDEVs, Kicking has opted for his Librarian that's going to help support the Devastators which can now move about and shoot without setting up thanks to Veil of Time. But the Inquisitor is here for now, only going to get one shot off onto the Sentinel and then the Melter Bomb goes onto the Bane Wolf. So a bit of confusion there. Probably want to get your Melter Bomb and your last kind of shooting the same thing so that you get, you stack the snares there and you can get an immobilization going. It should be the end of the Sentinel here though. Taking loads of damage from the Tactical Marines and the Last Cannon Devastator snipes it. Not a huge loss, honestly, for Flo. I feel like that was draining a lot of his repair support. This could be a beautiful smite. No smite. Villa times the Devastators again. There's the smite. That was very late. Honestly, really needs the Flamer doing something right now. Yeah, just move it forward. Oh my god, look at the Flamer. When the Flamer finally started firing. Of course, the problem was at first it didn't have the range. The Bane Wolf. Not really achieving that much now. Quite ballsy here from kicking, keeping the last kind of Devastator in play. But boom, gets it with a veil of time. I don't really understand what business the Bane Wolf had going over here. You know that the AV is right there. I would have shot it around this way, snuck it over, and gone to this side again. Could have stopped the scouts from capping the natural. Could have gem bashed all the kicking's power once again. I also find the heavy weapons team very strange. I mean, I guess it's good at controlling the librarian, but there's already ASM on the field, so... That feels a bit odd to me. Yeah, I'm not really getting it. Maybe if there was like a blob of triple tax or something, I'd get a heavy weapons team. Because I know that my guardsmen wouldn't be able to outshoot them. Or if I was fighting another faction that was spamming melee, get a heavy weapons team, put it behind the guardsmen. But against this kind of composition, doesn't really make sense. Kicking though did just jump in very prematurely at the first guardsman, but of course it's ASM, so they don't really care because they got the double jump. And you can see, even fully upgraded guardsmen there with their plasma guns, they're just not very helpful because they're just getting tied up immediately by the ASM. Not given enough time to output their damage against the tactical marines. Now, Flo's had a lack of power as well from the gen bashes. He has managed to replace his gens over in his natural. He also got a gen over here on the contested, well, the secondary natural. For a very long time, he's had this gen. But in spite of that, he's not had enough resources to be able to get a Lehman Russ, which is a whopping 135 power. So you can see he's got 60 and 40. Oh, he would have if he didn't get Pergatus. I believe Pergatus is 50 power, so... It's a good war gear for sure, but I think getting a Lehman Russ out would have been the priority. I mean, I understand there's already AV, but like, you take tier 3. Kasakins are nice, and they're certainly outputting some good damage here with their hotshot last guns, but... Is it really worth a tier 3 tech? I guess we'll see. Flo at this point, of course, is down a little bit of EPs. He's not super far behind, but he is down. The problem really is how these marines just keep leveling up. To be fair, the ASM are only level 2. The tax did reach level 3. Apo is level 3 with some stimulants. Ooh, gonna lose the librarian. Really slow there from kicking. I'm not sure what he was doing. I guess he was paying too much attention on his scouts trying to flank with a grenade and the shotguns. Can the shotguns get the kill? No, they're gonna melt. Yeah, that's double fully upgraded guards. Uh, uh, yeah, double fully upgraded guardsmen and a Kasakin squad. Remember, the Kasakins, when they kill a model, will inspire the nearby guardsmen to do more damage. So, there's going to be a lot of DPS coming out there. Especially when the Kasakin have donned their plasma guns, too. Oh, wow. Yeah, these guys do crazy damage with plasma guns. 19 and they get 2. So, you're looking at nearly 40 DPS there versus the 24 from a guardsman squad. That's insane. I didn't realize their plasma guns were that good. Jeez. That's mad. 
It's like 50% stronger than the Plasma on a Gasma squad. And of course, these guys are, are tankier. They're also heavy infantry. They also can sprint. They also get frag grenades and they get crack grenades. And they can cap 50% faster with the Sergeant, which we do see now is present. And they inspire. So yeah, they're a very good unit, but they are capped at one. So we'll see what Flo's going to go for next. You would assume that he's going to probably get the, the Lehman Russ. But then again, let's have a look at his resources. I mean, he's taking so long that Kicking is now managing to get to tier 3 as well. You see, he never managed to get a Gem Bash off here. If he got that Gem Bash with the Bane Wolf player that I suggested, then he would have been in a lot better spot for sure. Kaskin here, easily going to route the Devastators. Devastators, of course, don't really have any value right now with the Snow Vehicles on the field. Just a capping unit. Feels kind of bad to have the Kaskin. Dealing with side capping last kind of devastators, I guess it's nice that they cap 50% faster, but yeah, you're really gonna need your Kaskin in the main fights here. So Flo should have the resources for a Lehman now. He does, he's not getting a Lehman, he's gonna get a, a, a Bane Blade variant. Maybe it'll be a Bane Blade proper, maybe it'll be a Storm Lord. I wouldn't imagine you'd be going for a Storm Blade and a 1v1 like this where you're contending with ASM and the stuff, the sort. Doesn't really seem like a Stormblade would be very good. I think a Stormlord or a Baneblade would both be quite useful here. I think probably I'd go for a... I think I'd go for a Stormlord. Melt all these Marines. Nearly wipes the ASM there. Free HP of course if there was no Angels of Death global from the Apothecary giving that 50% damage reduction that would have been a wipe. They get knockback immunity as well, but it's now worn off. These marines could turn onto the guardsman, but there is a brazier inquisitor there who gets a beautiful special, killing the sergeant on the tactical marine squad. The airport is in this combat. Honestly, might be a good idea just to pick up the sanguine chainsaw on the apo A little bit more damage, but giving him that sustain in melee as well. Super cheap upgrade. You might as well if you've kept him with a chainsaw. And to be honest, there's so many ranged threats. Having the Sanguine Chainsaw and keeping the enemy ranged units tied up could be pretty good. It's going to be the Storm Lord, yeah. Alright, well, look, against the Storm Lord... Oh, the, the ASM died! How the fuck did they die? It must have been a delayed melee attack, I guess. Oh, wow, that's crazy. There was nothing in the retreat path, I thought. I didn't see anything. It could have been a, a delayed melee attack. It's, it's a mechanic that happens sometimes as... So melee attacks never miss in this game, right? So if you're winding up a melee attack and it's about to proc and, and there's a very, very thin window of time where if you get knocked over, it will delay the melee attack till like 10 seconds later you'll take the damage. Um, it's, it's a bit of an engine problem. But basically, you should have took that damage immediately in the first place. It's just the knockback messes it up. Uh, and I guess that, that must have been what killed the ASM, I assume. Or maybe there was something in retreat and I didn't notice, I'm not sure. Maybe it was even a health fury strike from Flo. I don't know. This is actually quite hilarious. Kicking is going for a Land Raider Redeemer, and Flo has the Stormlord. So the Stormlord... It's got that really powerful Inferno damage Vulcan Bolter that you can see on the front there. This will absolutely melt Marines, but it doesn't have the anti-vehicle capabilities that a Bane Blade would have, because it's only an Inferno Bolter. It won't, it'll melt Marines, but it won't really hurt vehicles. So that's going to be a problem for the... The, the Land Raider Redeemer is going to be a problem for the Stormlord in that respect. The Stormlord does have two... Uh, side mounted las cannons though so it can still hurt vehicles quite a bit but the land raider has the multi multer on top the land raider has the two heavy flamers generally the the weapon kit of the storm lord is better at fighting but the advantage of the land raider is that you can well you firstly you heal off of it you don't get healed from the storm lord secondly you can retreat to the land raider you can't retreat to the storm lord so this will be interesting Probably wants to get... Hmm, he can go for Vanguard now. I was going to say he probably wants to get a Predator. I don't... Has he seen the Storm Lord yet? I don't... I don't know if he has or not. Then again, 
yeah, the Vanguard will be useful to tie up the Guardsmen because they're going to be a problem. But then again, good luck using Vanguard, even with Apothecary support, when there's a Stormlord behind it. That seems like it would be quite rough. But let's see, here's the Land Raider. The Land Raider with the Heavy Flamers, if they can get in range of the Guardsmen, is obviously going to melt them in literally seconds. The Stormlord now backing up. Has that just got an auto cannon? Oh, it's got an auto cannon. That's really bad timing for Flo. He's getting another heavy weapons team. One has to assume that that's going to be a last cannon. I mean, it will be. That's why I'm saying it's bad timing here from the auto cannon. He got that just before he seen the Land Raider Redeemer. I'm sure he would have rather had dual last cannons to take down that behemoth. But this is where the Vanguard are going to be quite useful. They're going to be able to jump in and deal with the auto cannon or the last cannon when it presents itself. Here it is coming out now. We'll see how Kicking can use his scouts here. That could be very useful as well. There's no detection. No Kadashin Devils, so grenades can come in from close range. Here comes one. And they de-set up, so they lose their refractor shield that they get when they're set up, which was a bit of a mistake. But I guess it's not too big of a deal because they just reinforced off the storm mod. So you've got to you've got to hit everything. Everything has to move in together here because of the ability to reinforce. And this is a nasty range blob in the middle here. You got your plat. Oh, they've gone for melter guns now. The the, the Kaskin. Okay. The Guardsmen are the ones that are going to be scouting. Land Raider Redeemer really wants to get the flamers on them, but the flamers are really short range. That's the problem. The Land Raider's scared because of Auto Cannon, Last Cannon, and Last Cannons. And now an Inferno pistol on the Inquisitor as well, so that's a really strong Inferno. It's not an Inferno damage weapon, it's a Melter damage weapon. Okay, get the Land Raider moving forward. You need to get the Flamers onto these Guardsmen to overwhelm their reinforced time. Nope, he's keeping the Land Raider back. That's not gonna work, Kicking. It's not gonna work, mate. Because he's getting the damage from the last cannon on the Stormlord, but honestly, oh my god, look at that fucking Vulcan Bowler. Yeah. Yeah. Melting your Land Raider Redeemer. The problem is that the DPS from the last cannon is getting massively offset by the double repairs from the Guardsmen. He didn't commit with everything at all. The attacks have been on the side. The Land Raider really needs its flamers to put some work onto these Guardsmen. I'm pretty sure the Land Raider will kill the Guardsmen faster than they can reinforce if they just stand in front of dual flamers. Not to mention you've got the Frag Assault ability from the grenades that are all on the side of the Land Raider Redeemer. So that also will be very useful for the spike damage. You could use that to try and wipe some of these. But yeah, you don't just want to mindlessly charge forward with your Land Raider. You need to get the Vanguard in there first. You need to make sure your last cannon is set up again. He moves in just with a vanguard, which... Go! You've got to do something, man. Vanguard are going to tear this heavy weapon team to pieces. They proc a special quite quickly. Now they're getting suppressed by the Stormlord. I don't know why Kicking's not moving his bloody Land Raider Redeemer forward. He's got to move it forward to support. Just charge the Land Raider at the Stormlord. The Stormlord right now is focusing on the vanguard. If it's focusing on the vanguard, the last cannons have been wasted and can't hit the Land Raider Redeemer. The Land Raider Redeemer, remember, does have the Multi-Melter, so it can do some damage to the Stormlord. He's got to get the Land Raider Redeemer involved. So we've got a flank from the Kassak in here. I'm not really sure what their plan is. They just get frag assaulted and then roasted by the Flamers, plus Vanguard. Vanguard power melee weapons will actually rip the Kassak into pieces, as you're kind of seeing. Land Raider's... Confused? What's he doing? Kick in, you throw in. You're making the Stormlord look OP. The problem for here is that the Stormlord outranges the Land Raider so badly that multi melt is not really putting in any work. The fucking flame, flamers, the heavy flamers on the Land Raider haven't really put in much work. Eh! I was using Angels of Death to cap the VP with the Apo. Bro! You gotta get fighting! Yes! Yes, let's go with the Land Raider. Charge it at this Stormlord. Just charge! Use your Multi-Melter. The Multi-Melter's out of range. The Heavy Flamers aren't hitting anything. The Heavy Flamers, I'm telling you, will kill these Guardsmen faster than they can reinforce. You've got to get the Heavy Flamers involved. Go, Kikin. Go. Go, go, go. Oh, my gosh. He does have a Power Fist now in his Vanguard, so he can threaten the Stormlord in that regard. That's one of the, another reason why I wouldn't have gone for the Stormblade. 
Sawblade's inability to fire on the move would make it extremely vulnerable to things like that. But just, yeah, just get the Vanguard out. Jesus, they're going to take so much damage from my Pope and Bolter. I mean, he's chipping away at this Stormlord. Obviously, the last cannon keeps getting in a lot of shots. I feel like the Tactical Marines could just pick up a missile launcher right now. I don't really feel like the Flamer is doing much for him. And the missile launcher, given Kicking's economy, is very cheap for a reasonable amount of spike damage, given they are level 4. Dodging the judgment there by going inside the land raider. But here comes a Lehman Rust now as well, so... Stormlord, of course, should just focus down the Devastators to deset them up using his Falcon Bolter. It's just charging right now with the last cannon, which is a mistake. The Stormlord can get rid of the Devastators really quickly with its Falcon Bolter, but it's not facing the correct way. The Falcon Bolter, of course, on the front, you can see it's a front mounted turret, so it only has limited range. It's got a limited arc of fire, rather. Vanguard going to take out another auto cannon. Vanguard have done so good, man. And he didn't take out the last cannon devs. They've been shooting the whole time. Okay, Land Raider Redeemer, maybe should just advance. Okay, we've got a missile launcher on the tactical space marines as well. Is this a rocket run? Gonna dodge the rocket run getting inside the Land Raider Redeemer, but the rocket run knocks over the Devastators. Man, I didn't even think it was gonna. Oh boy. What HP is on the Stormlord? 381. Okay, should be able to kill the Stormlord. Missile, lo missile attacks, shoot your missiles. What are you doing? The missile attacks aren't shooting. I don't know what they're doing. They're shooting at the Lehman. The Devastators have set up in the wrong position. It is a 3-0 cap in favour of kicking. No, it's not. It's a 2-0 cap. Is he going to be able to get this in time? Uh, I don't know if he's got enough time, dude. Ooh, this is so fucking close. No, he's not got enough time. He's not got enough time. Ha <laughs> ha! Kicking wins it with the aggressive Land Raider in the end. Uh, it, was a bit, it, it wasn't aggressive enough, I've got to be honest. He was making the Stormlord make the Land Raider Redeemer look absolutely useless, but... He was only using the Assault Cannon on the Land Raider Redeemer when it's got massive sponsored mounted heavy flamers and a, a multi-melter, which weren't even firing the whole time. Sad. But he did it. Well done. The Vanguard proved to be absolutely amazing in the end. Jeez. They killed so many setup teams. Big mistake at the end there with Floor with the Stormlord. He... That thing with the, the Mega Vulcan Bolter, that could have killed the Devastators, or at least deset them up and forced them off so fast if he just focus fired them. But he didn't. He was messing around, driving around, shooting at the Land Raider. Yeah, crazy. Absolutely mental game. Kind of cool to see a Stormlord versus a Land Raider Redeemer. How often do you see that in a 1v1, folks? Not very often at all. That's going to be all for you, boy Topid. This time, I'm signing out. Topid, out. <laughs>